Okay, tiny bit of an update, guys. If we look over here, you'll notice, where did the betas go? Well, I have news. The beta tanks have cycled. So they are now in their five gallon tanks and no longer in their little cups. We're so happy for them. And they are doing really, really well. And then we have Rika down here on the floor and Seiran. We took filters that we had in the grow out tank and in the snail tank extras that we were just preparing just in case and went ahead and stuck them in the extra beta tanks because we were only originally planning those four and then we saw pretty betas you know how it goes so <laughs> they're in there we're only waiting for the breeding tank the daphnia brine shrimp and this grow out to finish cycling but they're almost there you can see the baby guppies are doing well the snails in here all over the place they don't seem to like that carrot I'm gonna have to try something different but they have been eating the eggshell and over here we discovered the snails really really like the yellow squash they're absolutely weighing it down right now and all the guppies are doing fine we haven't seen any babies yet but we are on day 22 of gestation so any day now we will have babies we're just waiting you can see them hiding over here in the weeds if they thought I was feeding them they would be out and about we've also ordered some more stuff for our fish room we went ahead and got two more tank heaters so that we can keep one permanently in the guppy tank and we can put another in this grow out and then we'll keep the other one over here in the breeding tank couple other things some food for the baby guppies uh, just random tools that we needed around the fish room another one of these oral syringes guys if you have a fish room please get one of these they are the most useful thing this one has been so worn it's lost all the markings on it but they're great for dosing medicine and prime and all that kind of stuff because you can get it to drop. <laughs> kind of like a pipette, but they usually measure in milliliters. So they're, they're really great and useful. You can see our cycling stats here. We dosed another two of the tanks today, but we are well on our way. We're so happy that these tanks have finally cycled because as you guys know, for the last, oh, what has it been now? Weeks, weeks and weeks, I don't even know. We've been keeping these bettas in little jars like these, little two liter bottles and gallon bottles and doing 100% water changes every day. And it's a lot of work and it's a lot of stress on them when they don't need it. I mean, obviously ours are still healthy. You can see Jumin here is doing really well. He's all floofy and moving and they're all really active and happy. So we did good. They didn't get sick. Nobody else has died, but it's just unnecessary. So, no, we don't have to do that every day. When we have babies, eventually, yes, we'll have to jar them and we'll be back in that routine, but that's more of a, a space thing. You can't have a five gallon container for, you know, hundreds of babies. It's ridiculous. They wouldn't even all fit in here. So, of course they'll be jarred, but these guys really needed bigger tanks. They are adult breeders and they're so happy now. Don't worry about the fact that you don't see any heaters in these tanks. Obviously, 
we are keep keeping our fish room warm. It's very humid in here too, you guys. It's like, ugh. It usually, during the afternoon, as you can see down here, it gets up to about 84 degrees and it never drops below 79. So it stays nice and warm in here. These tanks sit at about 80 at all times. So they stay nice and warm and we don't have to worry about them. We've been monitoring them for weeks and weeks and taking the temperature every day. So we know that in this range of 79 to 84, these tanks will stay at 80 all the time. And the bigger tanks that do not stay at 80, we went ahead and put heaters in, so they will stay at 80. Everybody is going to be doing great. I cleaned my fish room. It's looking crowded with fish stuff, but relatively clean, except for these socks and PJs I need to mend. <laughs> but that is all for now. Hopefully the next time there's a video, it will be Guppy Babies. I'm really hoping you guys, you will probably see that tacked on to the end of this video if it happens this week. If it doesn't happen this week, this will be the end of the video and you'll see Guppy Babies next week. Whatever. I just wanted to update you guys because I know you've been waiting for these tanks to cycle like we have and enjoy knowing how things have updated. There's our little Guppy Baby. They're so happy. I just fed them a little bit ago. You can see some snails there on the bottom hanging around. Even though you can't see them right now, there is, let's see, 21 snails in this tank. Yeah, you'd never know, but there's 21 snails in there between the bladder and the ram's horns. And in this tank, even though we can see more of them, there are 24. Guys, we have an update. Disaster has struck the fish room. First, for the good news, all of our tanks are cycled, which is amazing. We have currently moved all the snails over into this container, which I will explain in a minute. But the cool part is, in the four days we've had these snails, their shells have grown half an inch, which is really cool. They're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. We're excited. You'll notice I have snail-proofed this tank with Velcro. And over here, the baby guppies have been moved back into the parents' tank. They are big enough that the other guppies can't eat them, and they are doing well, we made some snello this week and the guppies stole it all from the snails and so the snails are another tank eating their snello, which they also love. But that's not the bad news and that's not why we moved them. Unfortunately, our guppies have had a tough week. First of all, if I can find him, I don't see him right now. We had a problem with Hippo. You guys may remember our prettiest male guppy we have named Hippo. Hippo at some point this week got a little overexcited. He smashed himself around in the tank a little bit and he has a broken back. He's okay, he's still eating, he can still swim but he is paralyzed from the pectoral fins back. So he won't be breeding anymore, unfortunately. He can still get around. We have seen him zoom around the tank, but he does swim a little funny because he has to move his whole body rather than just his tail, like most of the other guppies you'll see, especially on these little ones. They, they move their tails a lot when they swim and he cannot do that, so he uses his whole upper body to swim, and it means when he's not attempting to swim, his back end tends to sink because he has no control over it. 
but we have been watching him for a couple of days and he can swim. He can get around quite well, really fast even. He still gets food. He can still fight with the other guppies. I'm just not convinced he can breed. So sad. The second bad news is we have discovered that at least one of these guppies there he was. I just saw him. There he is. That's Hippo. See, he can still swim. It just takes him a little more effort. Um, as I was saying, one of our guppies, one of the females, has come down with Camelanus worms. It is a roundworm parasite in freshwater fish. It is a little bit difficult to treat because they are immune to uh, most parasite meds, but Levamisol seems to work really well, so I am in touch with someone who sells it. It's a little hard to find, but I did find a chemist who has it, and I am in touch with them to go ahead and get some of this dewormer for our guppies. Uh, Camelanus worms are really terrible. They infest freshwater fish and they chew around through their insides and feed off their blood and in extreme cases uh, the fish waste away. They get lesions, they bleed internally, and they can literally have the worms explode out of their guts. It's disgusting. It's highly contagious through just like drops of water. And unfortunately, it is something a lot of hobbyists deal with. Here is Hippo. Notice how he's swimming with his tail down because he can't control it. But when he wants to swim, he can get around. Poor hippo. So we have to treat this entire tank. Uh, luckily, because of the way this parasite works, it needs an intermediary host, meaning part of its life cycle has to live not in fish, not in the water column, but in invertebrates, like our snails over here. So we have separated the snails. They are going to be in strict water quarantine for three weeks because if any of them do have these worms, uh, their life cycle will be over in three weeks and without being able to find a fish host, the worms will die in their larval stage. So they don't need to be treated thankfully because the dewormer would kill them but because of this, we had to separate the tanks. They'll be fine in three weeks. The worms don't hurt them, they just use them as a host. These guys, however, have to be treated. So we are gonna get the meds. We are going to treat this tank and save our guppies because the only other choice is to euthanize all the fish and bleach the tank, and I'm not willing to do that. I love my guppies. So we're going to go the slightly more difficult route and treat them all, but they are also in strict quarantine until after they have been treated, and I'm going to make that be at least three weeks, just like the snails, just to be sure. We are really lucky because we have been using equipment between our tanks. <laughs> Which is a terrible idea, you guys, and I know it, and I shouldn't have done it, but I'm lazy, and who doesn't do this? <sighs> Smart people. <laughs> but we got really lucky that we didn't have snails until recently. Uh, and the bettas don't have any signs of having this. It came in with the guppies. Luckily, we had the betas before the guppies, and until, like, two days ago, they were over here, you will remember, in their cups. 
They were strictly quarantined in cups. They had fresh water. They didn't share any equipment with the guppies. And also, none of them have had snails with them. We have kept them completely separate. So up until now, they haven't been contaminated. Now, in the last two or three days, we have been using equipment between the tanks. But because of the life cycle of the parasite and the fact that we only got our snails about four days ago now, the likelihood of them having gotten the parasite and then also transferring it to the betas is very, very small. So, luckily, we don't have to treat the betas. They're fine. We're watching them, but they haven't shown any symptoms of being ill with parasites. They're all doing good. So, we are going to quarantine the snails and the tank next to the snails just in case water droplets, you know and we are going to quarantine the guppies for three weeks. In the meantime, the rest of our tanks have all cycled and so we can get our Daphnia. Now Daphnia is a crustacean, an invertebrate, and can carry the worms. So to cut back on contamination, when we get our Daphnia, they're going to sit over here for three weeks <laughs> and not share any water with anything. We're not going to feed them to any of the fish for three weeks. We'll let them populate and that will ensure that there's no happenstance in which our Daphnia culture will get infected with these worms. So they too will be in isolation. Luckily, brine shrimp can be infested, but it's incre incredibly unlikely because they are in brine water, which Camelotus worms cannot survive in. So, yeah, we're in heavy quarantine. We're bleaching equipment right now. Hi, Bella. And it's just one of those things, you guys. <laughs> Something always has to come up. But it's okay, we're going to deal with it. The fish are going to be fine. Luckily, I had just learned about these worms a couple weeks ago from another fish YouTuber who had an outbreak in their fish room. And so as soon as I saw the parasite in one of the fish, I immediately knew what it was and I knew what it had to be treated with. But I still, you know me, overprepared. Stayed up till like 3 a.m. last night doing research getting a hold of the chemist, making sure I knew what to do and how it was spread and how the life cycle works so that we can keep this under wraps. <laughs> We're still waiting on guppy babies, you guys. It's It's been a week. The baby guppies are now officially two weeks old today. You know, it's just, it's, it's just been a week. So that is the update for now. We will update you if anything else happens. As you can see, Ponyo here is getting very red. You can see her, her eggs through her abdomen. She's so healthy, look how fat she is. She's not bloated or anything, but like her body width is so good. You can see her ovipositor sticking out and you can see that light spot on her side is her ovaries shining through her coyness because she is so ready to mate as are all our other fish. Anyways, that's this week's update. Just want to tell you guys what was going on. Show you some of the stuff that's happening. Bella, you should not be up there. And we will update you if anything else happens and let you guys know how the guppies are and how poor Hippo is doing. We're waiting to see if the other fish pick on him a lot. And if they do, we are going to remove him and make him a pet fish and put him in another tank. But like I said, he gets around fine, he's eating fine, he seems okay, he's not sick. So as long as he still has a good quality of life, you know, it doesn't matter. 
that he's paralyzed. If we see he's having trouble or he's getting sick or he stops eating or the other fish pick on him too much, we will reconsider euthanizing him or moving to him to his own individual tank as circumstances dictate, but for now he's okay. We'll see you in the next video.